Okay, this is the uh, engine bay of a uh, 1982 Jeep Scrambler. These things are a uh, pretty rare commodity, you know, it's pretty difficult to find them, especially in this condition. Um, looking under the hood in the engine bay, everything is correct and original. No one's monkeyed around with anything, it still has the original uh, decals on the uh, uh, air cleaner, on the uh, header panel here, the uh, uh, cubic inch displacement. Uh, it's a 258 cubic inch uh, inline six cylinder engine. It's a 4.2 liter basically. And um, it's a pretty venerable engine that uh, AMC actually used this motor for quite a few years. It's carbureted, has a two barrel carburetor on it, a conventional intake manifold, not fuel injected. Um, it's it definitely a great motor. These things just ran and ran. There was no issues with them. A very serviceable. You got a lot of room on both sides of the engine to do anything you want. Change your oil, uh, anything. Change the air filter. It does have power steering. It has power brakes, dual stage master cylinder, original washer bottle on it. Um, someone's put an updated battery in it. Uh, there is a new uh, starter solenoid on it and new associated wires going to the uh, battery. Uh, original radiator, the correct style hoses on it. Uh, I don't see anything on this engine compartment that is not original. I mean, as far as the paint even goes, it's all original paint underneath the hood here. And again, like I said, the, the original sticker on it yet, not one that uh, has been replaced through the years. Uh, newer alternator that uh, has been put on it, new uh, fuel pump, uh, still has the original uh, um, bent uh, steel fuel lines with the inline filter going to the carburetor. Uh, exhaust manifold is not rusted. You can see the engine has been out, completely repainted, and I'm sure it's completely rebuilt. Everything is done to the nth degree on this vehicle. Uh, when you look at this, you can see that someone has taken a lot of care, a lot of diligence to put this vehicle into the condition that it is now. Uh, again, originality in every way underneath the hood. No headers, no different carburetors, different intakes. In fact, it still has its little cold air uh, snorkel that goes to the uh, header panel here. Um, it does have a uh, auxiliary transmission oil cooler added to it. And um, it's just a, 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 as original underneath the hood as you could ever hope to find uh, one of these survivor type uh, uh, Jeep scramblers, which are rare in themselves. So we'll go around the rest of it and show you what we can. Hi, you're Hanksters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, today our guest on the floor is a Jeep Scrambler. These things are pretty much a rarity. It's very, very difficult to find these things. Uh, Kevin had one of these at his place up in PA about, uh, oh, about two and a half years ago. I saw it. It was just about the same color. It was more of a fawn color. Uh, this was more of a creamy yellow color, but uh, fantastic piece of uh, uh, engineering here. Uh, whenever uh, Jeep did these, uh, they only did them for a short period of time and they were really popular and really gained popularity in the last few years. So we're going to go over it and show you everything we can on it. Uh, obviously the striping is uh, correct for the car. Scrambler designation on the side of the hood. Uh, the paint on this thing is not driver quality. It, it approaches uh, uh, show quality. It's certainly nothing like the paint that came on these uh, when they were uh, uh, new in 1982. Um, everything on this has been uh, replaced, all the hardware has been replaced with stainless steel. Like your hood uh, hold downs are stainless steel, the, the mirrors are stainless, all the bolts that hold the hinges on are stainless steel. Uh, there's a stainless, actually there's a chrome, chrome bumper underneath a stainless cover that goes over top of it. Of course a stainless grill. Um, trim around the headlights, I'm going to say is chrome. So are the uh, uh, parking lights, they're chrome also. Here's something for you, uh, a little bit of trivia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you ever look at a Jeep, you'll see seven cuts in the grill, seven se segments in the grill. Uh, from what I understand, that designates the seven uh, different areas in the uh, world that the Jeep was deployed during times of war. So there's seven different uh, spots. So if you even look at a newer Jeep, you're going to see seven segments in the grill. Um, obviously, it's lifted. We'll check into that a little bit more when we get on the side. 
there's no marks on the front of this bumper cover, or you can see from behind that the chrome on the bumper is uh, is fine. Why they put this stainless on it probably just shines a little better than the chrome did. The uh, uh, front end of this thing has absolutely no dents or dingies whatsoever on it. Still incorporates its uh, original plastic fender flares that uh, bolt on, uh, side marker lights. Uh, the front end of this thing is just exemplary. There's no marks, no dents, no deviations, uh, no imperfections in the hood or the paint whatsoever. Absolutely none. A nice straight front end. Obviously the bumper lines up. I don't even know how you'd miss a line of bumper on this thing. But uh, we'll go down the side and see if we can find something there for you. Okay, driver's side of our scrambler. Um, again, the paint on this thing is just exemplary. It's very, very nice. Um, the uh, striping is uh, just the way it came from the factory, same color combination and everything. Again, here's your little marker lights on the side, fender flares that are bolted on from the uh, back side. Uh, obviously, the uh, fitment of this thing up to the collar area, the hood, the front fender. Uh, this is the main cab area itself and the door. Again, our stainless fasteners that uh, uh, I mentioned that this is all stainless steel as opposed to just conventional screws. Uh, the uh, wipers are the original wiper arms and blades for this guy. They don't have window trim around it. It just has a rubber molding which is nice and uh, resilient yet that houses the uh, windshield. It's just a plain glass window. It does not have any sunshade fade whatsoever in it. The uh, area in the front here that's usually deteriorated if you pull this resilient rubber back and take a look Usually things accumulate down in here, and this is all rusted in, in most areas on these Jeeps. This is not like that. This is just as it was when it was new. There's absolutely no deterioration whatsoever on it. If you look at this thing, it has, uh, we'll get more into it underneath, but it definitely has a suspension lift to it. There's a lot of curvature to the springs on this thing. Um, it's a leaf spring vehicle as opposed to coil with the uh, newer ones that came out, I believe, in 96. Uh, but the, the, the suspension lift on this thing gives it a nice, uh, uh, a nice stance, has gas shocks on it, has some serious sneakers on it. it uh, it's got a set of uh, 12, 50 by 33 by 15 uh, radials on it. Definitely about as big a tire as you want to hang on one of these things. Rocker panel, just as nice as can be. You can see the door fitment. Uh, I'm going to assume there's nothing on the roof because there's no way I can see it. But uh, judging from the rest of this, I'm sure that there's no issues whatsoever with it. Uh, the wing area, which is fixed on these, it didn't have wings that opened. The later ones did. Um, this one does not. Uh, again, the paint around the doors, your white whiskers are absolutely brand new. And again, this is probably stainless. It could be chrome. I don't really know. But it, whatever it is, it's not deteriorated. There's no patina whatsoever on it. Again, you're back to the striping here. It really accents this uh, vehicle, really makes it look sharp. Uh, of course, it has a chocolate uh, covered uh, plastic top on it, fiberglass. The rest of this is tin. Uh, there's really no place for these things to rust uh, body wise, you know, very, very few spots on the back, usually a little bit, and that's it. Other than that, you never see any on the sides. Frame area has uh, some issues, but we'll check it underneath to make sure it's okay. Uh, I got some lumber on the side of it here and a roll bar that really gives it a nice accent. Um, geez, I don't know what to say here. Uh, this is held by stainless bolts that hold the uh, uh, lumber on the side of it. Uh, fender flare again on the back to, to give you a little bit of uh, covering over these uh, uh, wheels. They are a huge set of wheels and tires on this thing. Uh, back section the same way, and this, there's no, there's no filler or anything in this thing. It's, it's all tin everywhere on this vehicle. Absolutely, no deterioration whatsoever on it. None. Well, it's got a set of steps on the side of it so that uh, you can get into it a little easier. And um, chrome wheels, obviously 15 inch. Lockout hubs in the front. A white letter uh, uh, tires on it. Nice looking rig on the side. Really nice looking. Let's go out back seat. We can show you that. Okay, rear section of our Jeep. You'll see in Devin's still photos, but there's absolutely no deterioration whatsoever in the bed area. It's just the way it was uh, when this vehicle was new. 
Uh, there's no uh, there's no marks. There's no uh, indications that it ever had any rust whatsoever. Obviously, it has a tailgate on it, the spare tire uh, cover on this one. Uh, the um, lights are covered with uh, uh, stainless steel uh, bracketry, like a grating that covers them so that they don't get bumped and broken. Gas filler on this side. These are actually bumperettes, but uh, they're held over from the military t uh, days yet of the Jeeps. They were actually gas can carriers. That's where they put the gas, the extra gas, the extra fuel, gasoline uh, in those. They were shaped a little differently. These are shaped more as a functional uh, bumper from behind so that it gives you a spring type uh, uh, effect if you would happen to bump into anything or back into anything. So uh, they do have a, an actual purpose on this thing. Um, great looking on the back end again, you know, all the fasteners are stainless steel, lights are nice and crystal clear on it, Jeep designation with the uh, uh, AMC uh, badging on it here yet, the original red, white, and blue with AMC designation. Uh, there's absolutely nothing, so, oh, class 3 hitch, how about that? Somebody put a real heavy duty class 3 hitch on this guy. Hmm. So the back end is just as it was on the side and the front, there's absolutely no imperfections. Uh, no chips, marks, dinghies whatsoever, and no imperfections in the paint. Uh, it's really an exemplary piece of equipment so far, but we got one more site to do yet. Okay, here we go. Um, again, scrambler designation, stainless uh, uh, bolts holding that on. This is a stop for the tailgate. When you swing the tailgate around, it stops from the... the Mechanism smashing in and dent the side of the uh, vehicle. That's why that bracketry is there. The uh, lumber on this side is the same as the other side. I mean, really well finished. Uh, looks like it has a urethane type of coating on it. Same way on this side. There's just, it's all tin. Um, it's got a heck of a roll bar in it. This is definitely a functional roll bar the way it's structurally and uh, tied in with the uh, framework of this vehicle and body. Uh, it, it's just as nice as you'd ever hope to find, uh, framework-wise. You can put some lights on the top of it if you want. You can certainly add anything to this you want from this point. Huge, plain, straight glass window in the back. Again, with nice, uh, soft rubber uh, you just put in. Nice, soft rubber. It's not dried out or deteriorated at all. And again, there's no, there is no deterioration whatsoever in this vehicle anywhere. Absolutely none. Uh, Window fitment the same as the other side. There's absolutely no uh, uh, no issues whatsoever. Uh, this is all new. All the your seals on the other side and this side, white whiskers. Uh, it's all been replaced and new. Same as the door handle. And again, it's as new as it was in 1982. Steps on this side, same way. Uh, door fitment, and you can see that. I mean, it just lines up just as nice and straight as can be. Sometimes I wish we could get our Camaros and Chevelles and Roadrunners and everything to line up this well. Uh, let's see here. I don't see anything at all there. Uh, Christ style antenna on it, uh, single mast, the way they did them back then. Jeep designation on it. Scrambler on the side. Another wheel lift molding. And again, there's no deterioration at all. You can see that nothing has ever been rusted or deteriorated on this vehicle. It's all tin. So we're back where we started. Uh, it's kind of a small vehicle. It didn't take us too long to go around this, not as much as it did a, a regular car. But it's a scrambler. They I mean, only made them for a short period of time, and I don't know the actual years that they produced them. I do know that they're impossible to find. And um, it, it's a vehicle that uh, is starting to gain it seems like every year in popularity. You're going to own this for half of what we just sold a uh, first generation Bronco for. And it has just as much charisma as that Bronco does. In fact, it has more rarity than that Bronco does. It, uh, it, it, it's just a vehicle. You're, it, it serves as a pickup truck. Uh, it serves as a beach vehicle. It serves as a, something you could take hunting uh, or to the store and pick up groceries. Uh, it, anything you want to do with it. Uh, it, it's certainly the quality of a vehicle that you could take to any car show uh, and guaranteed you'll have the only one there. Uh, it's it's uh, available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. 
Uh, they came pretty much one way, I guess, um, as far as the configuration goes. You could get them in a four or a six. And I think they had a 2.5, if I remember, four-cylinder engine, or you could get this uh, uh, 4.2-liter six-cylinder, which this one does have. Uh, it does have steering and brakes. Um, just a nice, nice vehicle all around. You can see the chrome spoke wheels offset, um, suspension lift on it, nice curvature to the leaf springs in it. Undercarriage, from what I can tell here, gas shocks on it also, uh, just from looking underneath it. But once we get it up on a rack, we can get a little bit more explicit with the undercarriage for you. But it's available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, and it would be great for you to come down and take a look at it. But if you can't, that's why we're doing this video for you. And uh, Devin's going to have 90 to 100 photographs of this vehicle uh, for you to go ahead. They're high resolution. You can go ahead and look at these things uh, and uh, see everything we pointed out. If there's anything we missed, you can pick it out. I mean, it's just, so we try to go over these as uh, uh, thoroughly as we can, as thorough as we can. And uh, we uh, uh, make every attempt to show you every little imperfection or de defect in it. It's not a new Porsche GT3 or a Ferrari 488, uh, but it, it's a car that's nicer than it ever was in 1982 when this car was produced. So you got to take a look at it. It's here at Hangsters, and I'll bet you can't find too many more available for sale. Okay, this is the uh, interior of our Jeep Scrambler, and uh, we'll go over everything we can on it. There's not going to be a whole lot, but we're going to go over everything we can. Uh, don't have to worry about a headliner because there isn't one. That's the roof. Uh, sun visors are the original nice resilient ones that uh, came with the vehicle. Um, no stitching coming loose whatsoever. There's no milkiness whatsoever in a mirror and it is a day night mirror. Uh, it looks like a padded dash. It isn't. It's um, hard to uh, like, I guess you could call it padded, but it, uh, I wouldn't want to kiss it at 20 mile an hour. Uh, VIN tag right on the front. Um, nice and legible and, and totally undisrupted, the correct uh, rivets still uh, intact on them. Uh, this thing is a kind of a modular vehicle. You can take this roof off. It does come off. <clears throat> it's not a five minute process, but you can get it off. And you can also take this windshield, uh, loosen these fasteners one on each side, and the windshield will fold forward. That's what those two little stand-ups are on there to keep the windshield from smashing the hood in but you can move the windshield forward and um, secure it if you want for just open air driving uh, so it, it's something that uh, you could take and uh, use as a convertible uh, if you wanted to you know it, 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 it's up to the person but um, uh, uh, cut pile carpeting in this thing uh, these were pretty deluxe for the uh, day correct style seating uh, and the correct vinyl that uh, they produced back then, as nice as can be. A nice console, two cups uh, holder here. Does have seat belts in it. Grab rail in the front. Uh, it has an aftermarket radio put in it. It has an oil pressure gauge, an amp gauge, obviously a speedometer here in the center. It has a tack and a clock also. And they look like they're, they must be Jeep out of, uh, accessories because they match the uh, rest of the uh, gauges perfectly. Uh, again, automatic transmission. Check this out. Tilt wheel. How about that? I didn't know it had a tilt wheel. Uh, door panels are absolutely flawless. The um, carpeting on the bottom is just as fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find. There is a glove box over here on the right hand side. Uh, door handle. The door pull for closing the door is missing on this one. It's in the glove compartment. It's deteriorated through age. We have two new ones ordered. Um, and they'll be here. We're going to put one on each door. That'll be just an extra. We'll throw it in there with it. This is going to go in a garbage can because it's broken on the ends. The uh, glove box. Let's see if I can get it open for you. See if there's anything in it. The glove box is uh, empty and lots of room in there for storage. Uh, yeah. Everything on is the new rubbers uh, inside the doors. Everything is just as clean and fresh as it was when it was new. Uh, window cranks, all the hardware, all the chrome in this vehicle is just as clean and fresh as it was when it, it was new in 82. There's absolutely nothing that you can uh, call. There's not even any scuff marks where you get in and out of the vehicle. Usually there's uh, uh, some area that's deteriorated here. Uh, 
being scuffed up through the years, and it uh, it has absolutely none. Again, the carpeting in this thing is also removable. So if you did decide to take this off and use it as a beachcomber, you could always remove this carpeting. And I'm sure there's drains in the hole in the floor, holes in the floor for drainage, and um, Use it as an all-weather vehicle. If it rains, it gets wet, and it runs out the bottom. You can run it up and down the beach or do whatever you want with it. Uh, uh, go hunting. It's definitely a multi-purpose vehicle. You can haul things in it. You can use it as a convertible. You can fold the windshield down if you want and play safari. Um, you can use it as a beachcomber. It does have steering and brakes. It is automatic. Uh, it's a very usable, drivable vehicle, and it's available here at Hangsters. And I know that I haven't seen one of these for, the last one I saw was the other one Kevin had, and that was about two and a half years ago. So we got one now. Take a look at it, Hangsters. Okay, we are in our Jeep Scrambler. Uh, really neat vehicle. Um, tilt wheel, check that out. It's got tilt wheel in it. Uh, this is a neat vehicle, very, very high quality, very high end. And um, you're gonna buy this for way less than you're gonna pay for a uh, first generation Bronco. And it's every bit as unique a vehicle as that vehicle is, too. In fact, this is going to be half as much as we just sold a really knockout, lifted up, uh, white uh, um, Bronco, um, first generation. It uh, does have a clock. It looks like this is all Jeep uh, equipment, too. It has a clock, which is not functioning. We don't do clocks, and we don't do radios. If they work, they work. If they don't, they don't. You get them either way. But anyway, that doesn't work. Let's see if the radio works. Thing. We talk about it. I Radio believe, does on, on work. How about that? Uh, nice high oil pressure. We just uh, fired this thing up. The oil pressure's up. The amp gauge is showing that it is charging. It's at uh, 13 point something five, 13.8 volts. Uh, tachometer is functioning as it should. Uh, it does have a tack. Um, I'm sure a speedometer is going to work. It shows a little over a quarter of a tank of gas. Um, we just lit it up so it's the temperature gauge is not functioning yet. It's not showing yet, but we'll check it here shortly. The wipers are just beating themselves to death out there just the way they should. Uh, turn signal left is functioning as it should. And turn signal right doing its act over here on the right hand side. Uh, so actually we have everything working except the uh, horn. We have to, um, we have to figure, well, you either have to roll down the window and throw some obscene gestures, or we can fix the horn. We'll probably fix the horn. Um, nice vehicle. I can't wait to drive this. This thing's really neat. Of course, we've got traffic all over the place right now, but we're going to see if we can go for a ride in this guy. Very, very neat piece of equipment. Goes down the road straight. It's got these huge, huge tires on them, 33-inch. Uh, 1250s, but you can see it just goes down the road straight as can be. I'm still not punching the steering wheel, and it's just going straight as can be. So let's try, as soon as this guy passes here, we'll try brakes, no, uh, uh, no hands. Straight as can be, no hands on the steering wheel, and it just stopped just as sweet as can be. Got to adjust this rear view mirror right here. I'll tell you what, this thing has a surprising amount of power to it with this. Uh, a 4.2 liter six cylinder in it. I mean, it's not lacking at all. Um, you're not going to win any races against Hellcats and Demons, but uh, more than adequate to pull anything you want to pull. Uh, you know, water bugs, uh, just probably, you know, a small boat within reason. You're not going to pull any uh, offshore boats or anything with it, but um, speedometer is working as it should, too showing us 35 mile an hour here, which I know is incorrect. Um, we're going faster than that because of the tire size and wheel size, but uh, uh, it is functioning. And the temperature also is coming up. I think that you saw that when Devin showed you that, but it is coming up and it's running nice and cool. So we'll turn around here and give it a little shot.
just guess it. It show at 45. I'm going to guess that's about 60 there. Um, definitely because of the tire size. But uh, nice tight vehicle. There's no deviation uh, as far as the steering goes. Uh, nice tight, precise steering. Whether someone rebuilt the steering box or what, I don't know. But it's it's very precise. You don't have to move it by an inch, and this car is going the direction you turn it. But to go straight down the road, um, there's no shakes, shimmies, rattles, squeaks, nothing. I mean, this car is just as uh, straight and nice a running car as you could ever hope to find. We're still going straight. So, <laughs> go off a little bit there after about a mile. But everything seems to function, everything, including the radio. So you don't get a clock that's working, so you'll have to use your wristwatch. But other than that, this guy is really, really a nice piece of equipment. I mean, fit, finish, um, everything, and uh, exclusivity. you got to remember that, you know, that, that counts for a lot. You're not going to pull into a parking lot or a car show or anything else to see another one of these. You're going to have the only one around. A uh, very, very rare piece of uh, engineering here uh, for Jeep. This thing's a, it's a rare find, and to find one in this condition is even more unusual. So take a look at it. It's here at Hangsters. And I'm not a four-wheel guy, but I even like it. This is the uh, undercarriage of our uh, Jeep Scrambler. The only one we have. Probably the only one that's available on eBay or anywhere else right now. I know there's not very many of these things. I guarantee there's none in this condition. This thing just acts absolutely exemplary. Uh, obviously, it has a new set of sneakers all around it, uh, white leather, and they're 1250 by 33, 33, 1250, 15s. You can see it does have a uh, lift kit on it. This does have a uh, leaf spring um, suspension system on it as opposed to the newer coil springs. So um, they have a nice curvature to them. There's gas shocks front and rear, all new. You can see everything on this vehicle has been addressed. Um, has the original steering box on it. There's no marks whatsoever, no deterioration on the frame. The original engine is still uh, with the vehicle and um, has a skid plate on the oil pan just the way they came from Jeep way back when. Uh, also, take note that there's no leaks on the engine or the bell housing area or the transmission at this point anyway. Uh, it has disc brakes in the front, the calipers look fairly fresh, the rotors are new, uh, all the associated hardware is fresh, new uh, sway bar links in the front, uh, you can see there's no leaks on the front differential, new U-joints, at least in the front, I can't see in the back yet, has a uh, steering stabilizer on it, uh, just everything on this vehicle is just as fresh and clean as can be. The uh, insides of the fender wells and the front are painted the uh, same color as the vehicle, which is the way they came from Jeep. The undercarriage is painted uh, like a semi-flat black, chassis black, and you can see the uh, framework itself, which is a full box frame on this front to rear. And um, it, it's a very strong system, very strong system with a lot of cross bracing uh, uh, from front to back on it. It's a nice... Uh, uh, Nice frame. There's absolutely no deterioration at all. There's no jack marks on it from being lifted up through the years. They probably lifted it up on their differential in the front and the back. Has a skid plate still intact underneath the transmission and the transfer case also, which is right there. Um, I can't see that new joint, but I can't see this one. It's also a new one, and so is that one. Has a catalytic converter on it with the standard exhaust that comes off the cast iron exhaust manifold. Uh, in that era, you had to have uh, late 70s and through the 80s, and that they had catalytic converters, and that's what that guy is. It does have appears to be a stainless steel muffler on it, and the uh, uh, the exhaust system I'm going to call it two and an eighth inch uh, from front to back. Um, parking brake is still hooked up and functional. The floor pans are the original floor pans. They don't need replaced. They don't have any uh, areas which uh, shows any type of uh, uh, work ever being done underneath this vehicle. The uh, insides of your uh, uh, fenders, you know, the fender lips, the rocker panel lips, everything is just as nice and fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find. And of course the steps, or whatever the heck you call them, to help you get up into the thing. Um, they're just, uh, the, the hardware on them is just as fresh and clean as can be also. There's a little bit of 
sound deadener material uh, on a center section of the uh, a vehicle, but other than that, it's still uh, just painted the way it would have been from uh, a Jeep <coughs> uh, in 1982. Um, let's see here. Transportation, no leaks whatsoever either. Uh, it looks good. Again, I mentioned the parking brake this in the front, drums in the rear, the um, floor, the uh, bed itself, and the vehicle. There's no uh, no deterioration at all. This thing is totally 100% rust free. It doesn't show any indication of ever having anything replaced on it or actually of any uh, deterioration uh, from age, wear um, elements that uh, uh, any kind of scale on the frame. <clears throat> There's no rust whatsoever anywhere. The uh, class 3 hitch is um, attached to the rear section of the frame and it's really attached well. They've actually even put another separate section of uh, uh, steel plate on the inside of the frame to go ahead and uh, uh, give it uh, some more structural rigidity with the hitch the way it's hooked on the outside of the frame. So it does have a good class 3 hitch system on it. A gas tank, it looks like somebody got mad at it and punched it uh, there, there, and a couple times there. I don't know what happened, but uh, certainly it, it, it doesn't uh, warrant any replacement. And again, there's no deterioration on it whatsoever. You know what? That's not the gas tank. That's a skid plate. Gas tank's up inside there. I've never seen gas tanks with holes clean up through them before. So that's a skid plate. Um, could be replaced if, you, you know, you really wanted to, I guess, but I don't see any reason to. The gas tank's housed up inside of it. Just a few marks on, on the tank skid plate itself. Um, Certainly nothing that uh, uh, would hamper the operation of the vehicle. Uh, again, nice curvature to the springs, new shocks in the back, in the front, no oil leaks at this point anyway, and uh, just as clean an undercarriage as you'd ever hope to find on a vehicle. This thing is uh, uh, really exemplary. It, it, uh, it presents itself as uh, an absolute new uh, 1982 Jeep Scrambler, uh, a 258 uh, cubic inch. Uh, uh, Six-cylinder engine in it, automatic transmission, power steering, um, power brakes. I don't know what else you'd want. This in the front, four-wheel drive. Got a new vehicle in a uh, 1982. So take a look at it. It's here at Hangsters.